Here is Sailor Studio 973, a red ink. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion on this ink. The paper I'm using here is a Moramon Nemesine notebook. My first thought was this is a nice basic red. I could confidently say I was wrong. There is tone variation by pen that takes this to more than a standard red. And generally, standard reds don't, don't shade. And this one does easily. It performs as about as well on non-fountain pen friendly paper, though it does lose a little bit of its luster. Now, when you see perf reds perform so well, you can see why someone would enjoy them. In fact, I can see this getting someone to start enjoying red inks. So this is a big winner when it comes to the red ink family. All of the writing samples are done with a Retro 51 P51 with a fine nib, a Retro 51 Corsair with a medium nib, a Retro 51 Lincoln with a 1.1 stub. The pen for today is a Kaveco Sport. Now that we know my opinion on this ink, let's see how I got there with the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the extra fine, this is the lightest tone that we're gonna get. It doesn't feather, it doesn't spread, it does shade. It shades very well. It looks great. It looks like a basic red that is shading. I mean, it's amazing. Look at they on the first line where the T is a nice lighter tone. The H goes to a mid tone. The E into the Y lightened up, but the bottom of the Y got a very dark again. And I think it's most noticeable there. And it got dark probably when, it cr when I crossed it with the N of now. Under on the third line, the U is a nice light tone, the U, a little bit darker, the D, E, get even darker, the R, lighten up a little bit. Great shading from this red ink. Looking at the medium nib, it is the darkest tone that we're going to get, and it is just beautiful on the page with no feather, no spread, with shading that you would have no trouble finding. Look at wood on the first line where the W-O is a nice lighter tone. The U darkens a little bit. The L-D at the end, very dark. Even they underneath that, the beginning of the T is lighter, but then it goes to a very dark tone the whole time. Weighted right next to that, starts lighter on the W-A-I and the Ted at the end, very dark and beautiful to see. Looking at the stub nib, it is lighter than it was with the medium. It does not feather. It does not spread. In fact, it does shade. Take a look at fact on the first line where the fact is lighter than the t at the end. It's definitely there. It's not huge and stand out all the time like voice. It's just the E that is uh, dark, but another on the third line, the A-N-O is light, the T-H very dark, and the E-R lighten up again. It does a great job. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. Like most inks, this one comes in a bottle. This is how the Pilot Custom 823 fits. And here is the Pelican M1000. Here's the ink level when you can no longer fill a Lamy Safari. There is approximately seven milliliters of ink left. The next writing sample is done in a Portage Reporter's Notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. It does not feather and it does not spread. The absorbent nature of this paper, though, did kick in a little bit, and I'm not really seeing shading going on. We're getting just a great red tone. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than it was with the extra fine, a little bit lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. It does not feather and it does not spread. It does shade and not just for a moment. Take a look at moment. You see most of it on that third line is a lighter tone, but that T is very dark. It's giving more than you would expect when you look at expect on the second line where the EX is light. The PE get very dark. The C lightens up a little bit, but the T, becomes the darkest letter. Looking at the stub nib, it is just a little bit lighter than it was with the medium. 
about the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. It does not feather, does not spread. It does shade, I think, better than it did on the Claire Fontaine. It's it's just so much. Look at crept out on the second line where the CRE are nice and light. The PT at the end, very dark. In out, the O is a nice mid-tone. The U lightened a little bit, but the T at the end got very dark. Looking at the back of the page, we see that we could easily write notes back here because it doesn't bleed or ghost. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is immediately put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. The one on the right, marked with a D, is let dry for 10 minutes before putting into water. The next writing sample is done on a national brand Steno notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine, obviously being affected by the tone of the paper a little bit, showing that this is a slightly translucent ink. Now, it's not changing in being a red, though. It's just a darker tone of red with no feather, no spread, shading even better than it did on the Claire Fontaine. It's just a wow for what's happening. The, the shading much more frequent back and forth. It's really, it's so nice. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than it was with the extra fine, lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. It doesn't feather and it doesn't spread. It does shade, not just a twinkle when you look at twinkle on the first line. Where the TWR lighter, the I gets just a little bit darker. The N lightens up a little bit again and the KLE at the end, very dark. Beautiful shading going on. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as it was with the medium. It does not feather and it does not spread. It does shade and better than it did on the Claire Fontaine. This paper is really bringing out some of the best that this ink has to offer. Don't be frightened by it when you look at frightened on the third line where the F is a darker tone than the RI, but the GHT get very dark into that E. The NE lighten up a little bit into that D, but it's the downstroke of that D that gets very dark. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding, no ghosting. We can easily continuing, continue our notes back here. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page. And more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. The highlighter is on the top left. Pen flush is on the top right. One third bleach solution is on the bottom left. And water is on the bottom right. The next writing sample is done in a Rhodia notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. It does not feather and it does not spread. It does shade just as well as it did on the Claire Fontaine. But the real reason we're using this is this quad rule to see how well it stands out. And I think it stands out fantastic, making this a great ink to use if you use a lot of quad rule paper. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than it was with the extra fine, the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. It does not feather and it does not spread. It does shade about as well as it did with the Claire Fontaine, maybe just a little bit lit less. I mean, if you look at rekindled, that's a fairly long word in the second line, but it's only the downstroke of the D that got darker. Same with caught on the first line, only that T at the end, definitely shading doing it as well as it did, just not as frequently as it did on the Claire Fontaine. Looking at the stub nib, it is a little bit lighter than it was with the medium, the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. It does not feather and it does not spread. It does shade just as well and frequently as it did on the Claire Fontaine. I mean, it's pretty respectable, you'd have to say. When you look at respectable on the first line, where the R is very light, very dark E following it, lightening up into that S, the PE quite dark light CT 
light A, very dark BLE at the end. Looking at the back of the page, we have no bleeding, no ghosting, and can easily continue our notes back here for the win. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Colorverse Mars Curiosity. Here is Diatramentis Sir Arthur Conan Doyle Oriental Red. Here is KWZ Raspberry. Here is Pannonia Ordogi Voris. The next writing sample is done in a composition lab notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is a little bit lighter and flatter, duller than it was on the Clairefontaine. Now it does not feather, it does not spread, it does shade just nowhere near as well as it did on the Clairefontaine, but it's there. Also, it stands out against this quad rule with any kind of problem making this a great ink to use as a student note taker. Looking at the medium nib, it is a little bit, just a little bit darker than it was with the extra fine, quite a bit lighter than it was on the Clairefontaine, still a bit flatter and duller as a tone than it was on the Clairefontaine. Now it doesn't feather, doesn't spread, it does shade better than I did with the extra fine, I think, not as well as it did on the Clairefontaine, but you're not, you know, expecting a ton of it. Look at gripped the lighted torch on the second line where the G is a little bit darker than the RI, the PP very dark, the ED lighten up a little bit. I said PP, we can all laugh. The lighted starts light with the light until we get to the H TED. The H TED becomes quite a bit darker at the end. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium, lighter than it was on the Clairefontaine. Lighter and duller in tone. No feather, no spread, almost nothing for shading. It still looks great on the page. We're just not getting a ton of, sh of shading, only one or two little spots. Looking at the back of the page and apologizing for the hiccups during the last one, it doesn't bleed or ghost, making it easy to continue your notes back here. Because I use both sides whenever I can in these books. While it's nice to see ink in the same color family, I prefer to see ink to complement the color on the page. Here is Pelican 4001 Blue Black. Here is Diatramentis Silver Gray. Here is Pilot Conpecky or Cerulean Blue. Here is Noodler's Texas Black Bat. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is darker than it was on the Clairefontaine. It does feather, it does spread. We really don't tend to care about the shading when it comes to the 20 pound copy paper. It's more, is the feather and the spread usable for what's there? And I think it is. I think it falls within the range that you could use this and not be distracted to where you can't see it. I will say that it spreads almost up to a medium, but not quite up to a medium. So it's kind of like a Japanese medium font. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than it was with the extra fine, but only a little bit lighter than it was on the Clairefontaine. It does feather, it does spread, it doesn't shade. Again, it's not that we care about it. Now, it's more still how usable is it? And I think this is very usable with the results we're getting on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium. Lighter than it was on the Clairefontaine, it does feather and it does spread. It doesn't shade. Now, as far as the feathering goes, I think the feathering is less than we had with the medium. The medium was the closest to out of control we had here and it wasn't 
horrible though it was ever present. Here, it is still quite present. So is the shading, but it is still very usable in that serviceable range. Looking at the back of the page though, we could see that we cannot continue our notes back here because you will ruin both sides, but it did not bleed through touching the page underneath. So what nib and pen do I think are gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? The paper I'm using here is yellow Rhodia paper. The extra fine gives the lightest tone and it shades. The medium was the darkest and it shaded as well. The broad was a nice mid-tone between the extra fine and the broad in tone itself and it shaded. So this is a great all around ink. I think no matter what ink or what pen you put this into, you're gonna be very happy with it. But for me, I was most impressed with its darker shades. So I would go with a slightly wet, fine or medium to get that darker tone and still keep the shading. Now I think a wet pen might give a beautiful dark red, but you will lose the shading if you do that. I hope you got something out of this video and thanks for watching. I want to let you know that the best way you can support this or any channel is to let retailers know where you heard of something if you go to buy.